Hello, and welcome to a new limited run podcast from Two Lazy Dogs Media. Reproductive Romanticism, the real stories of the reproductive cycle. My name is Ashley Carlson, aka Phoenix Nymphy, and I'm here to talk about the real stories of the reproductive cycle with birth givers and people who can give birth. When the overturning of Roe v. Wade was announced, I reached out to people who have the ability to give birth, including trans, non-binary, and cis women. Since the recording of the podcast, Roe v. Wade has been overturned and our country has been thrown into a very volatile and hostile situation for people seeking abortions. There have been reports of women being arrested and put in jail, of doctors being charged, and people dying. As a storyteller, I wanted to take this opportunity to interview some people about their own stories to give a better understanding of what giving birth is actually like. Today, I will be featuring Margot, aka Crimson Pleasure. This interview was a part of a larger discussion between two other moms, and this is her story. Before we jump into Margot's story, this is your trigger warning. We will be discussing very sensitive topics, including abortions and miscarriages. Thank you for joining me on this journey as we listen to the experience of the reproductive cycle. Hi, I'm Margot, uh, or Crimson Pleasure. Uh, I am a streamer and a billion other things. However, uh, I uh, had an abortion. I had a miscarriage that resulted in a DNC where they had to remove the fetus because uh, the fetus had died. And um, I had one vaginal birth. So I have one daughter and she is seven years old. I also had trouble getting pregnant, a lot of trouble getting pregnant. So of course we start getting questions and I responded the same way. Like I may never have kids. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, and I've started telling people that they ask, even if they ask somebody, I don't know. And I'm near them. I tell them that that's none of their business and an inappropriate question to ask. Um, so we would just like, you know, family and stuff would just smile and laugh and, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hard. It fucking killed me every time somebody asked. Uh, my now husband, Troy, and I had been together for a couple of years at that point, like not very long. Um, loved each other very much. Um, I, uh, this is, you know, this is very pre me knowing I have PTSD, me knowing, you know, anything about my mental health. I was very unsure about ever having children because by that point I already knew that I had no appropriate parenting recommendations. Right. <laughs> my parents were not, should not have been parents. Um, so we got pregnant and um i thought this might be a good thing um and i question that now because i knew i was pregnant before i was four weeks i could feel it really i was i was nauseous i could feel a softball sitting on my cervix i could feel it that's what it felt and, like for you yeah and apparently that's not normal <laughs> Um, so like I, 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 we talked, like we had a very long talk about it and like, we could at that point in our lives, we could barely take care of ourselves. Like we were like rationing heat and eating ramen some days. So like, it was not a good idea. Right. It would have just been a baby born into poverty. And like, at that point, you know, I was still smoking, like we didn't, there's so much and we were still a new couple. So we made the decision. Um, we went to Planned Parenthood. We made the appointment and the was the most horrific experience of my life. Well, one of them, I've got quite a few. Um, so he took me, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but, um, I want to say everybody who works at a Planned Parenthood, is a fucking saint. Yep. They are amazing, wonderful people that do not deserve the treatment they get. Um, so all these Bible beaters were standing on the sidewalk yelling and screaming things at me. 
terrible, terrible fucking things. And this wasn't an easy decision. It was just like, it wasn't like, you know what? Just going to have an abortion. It'll be fine. That's not how it works. Right. It was a serious conversation. I was upset about it. I, but I knew you can be upset about the decision and still know it's the right decision. Of course. So we get out of the car and there's this line of these just huge assholes just calling me a murderer. They're yelling mommy at me. They were my nightmare. And the best people I have ever met were the volunteers who stand outside of the clinics because they walk over to you and they yell louder. They say amazing things. You're going to be okay. We're so happy you're here. Everything's fine. That's amazing. Even um, an off off-duty police officer was there in his full outfit. And they walked me in. And they're all volunteers. Not a single person out there gets paid. They stand out there to help. And they are, they are angels. I'm not even a Christian. They are angels. They are beautiful people. And if you stand outside of a clinic and you help Anybody that's going in that day, I love you from the absolute bottom of my heart. Because they say horrible things. And they make you feel worse about a decision you didn't make easily in the first place. So um, I went in and... There were a bunch of other women there. It was the most packed I have ever seen of Planned Parenthood. And the reason it was packed is because they only had the ultrasound with so many dates. So they were screaming at these poor girls who just needed to get their uterus checked out to make sure they didn't have cancer. Right. Some of those girls couldn't have kids and they're screaming and calling them a murderer. They will, those people belong in the, just the, the depths of hell. Um, I don't even think they deserve that. I think they deserve to just go into a void with their thoughts, and that's all they get to live with for the rest of their lives, honestly. You're, you're, they're so bad, they don't even deserve hell. They deserve no interaction for the rest, for eternity. I don't know. I'd be really cool with somebody shoving a pineapple up their ass for eternity. <laughs> Um, so I went in, I, we opted for a chemical abortion, which is pills. I take a pill there and I go home and I take the other pill. Um, so I did my thing. I did my iron test. They were shocked, um, that I knew I was pregnant so quickly because I was four weeks. Um, and I took my pill and we went home. And don't you know those motherfuckers were gone by that point? Because we had already, like, we had everybody come in. So they don't need to stay there anymore. Um, we go home and I put this pill in my mouth. And I have to put it between my, my lip and my gums. Oh, it's a dissolve. Oh, those always taste the worst, too. And, hmm. uh... I lay laid on the couch while my body forced a miscarriage that day. And it was not a slow process. It happened quickly and it was excruciatingly painful. Like to the point where I was laying on the couch and my now husband was kneeling on the side of the couch, just holding my hand, rubbing my head, trying to get me through it. And then eventually like I felt it. Then I went upstairs and I sat on the toilet and out it came. And I was just no good for a couple of days. Um, May I ask how he was during all this? He was. I think that's also important that people understand that this doesn't just affect 
the birth giver, it also affects their partners and everyone else around them. He was extremely supportive. Yeah. He was, we had made the decision. So at this point he was concerned solely about me and what I was going through. And he hated every second of it because I had to endure all this pain for the decision that we made. Yeah. Um, so fast forward a couple weeks, I have to go back. Uh, I knew it was coming. So I, uh, my friend, my best friend uh, at the time who lived in England was visiting. Uh, I was like, let's go, come with me. It's going to be a day for you. <laughs> and he did. He Aww. went to, he went to Planned Parenthood. And uh, what they, what they, I had to go back to make sure that everything had come out. Because if I hadn't, then I would have had to go in for a, 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 a outpatient surgery to make sure they removed everything. Uh, because if they don't, it could kill me. It could uh, kill my, my chances of having children. So we get there. It's the same assholes. Right. Um, I borrow his... He brought an MP3 player at the time. This is how fucking long ago this was. He brought his MP3 player at the time, which I borrow and I put I put music on it. I put I put my headphones on and I turn the volume up as far as I could. And I get out of the car and the same cop is there, but there's different volunteers. And they they start talking to me and I pull my hair back and I touch my things. And they're like, good job. Um, and they 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 crowd me. That's what they do. They crowd you. And they they brought me in. <laughs> it wasn't that easy the second time because uh the way that this specific Planned Parenthood was, is it was a strip mm -hmm. with a tiny ass parking lot and then a sidewalk. So you had to drive over the sidewalk to get to the parking. And this old ass man decided he was going to stand in front of Troy's car. Now Troy is very already upset. I had already, we had already gone through it. I was already in a lot of pain. He heard, he heard the same things I heard going in and we never talked about it, but that had to have affected him. Um, and this dude wouldn't move. So he finally parks. He throw, he throws the car into park jumps out of the car and my linebacker of a fucking husband starts chasing this old man down. And I look at my friend and I was like, go get him. I can't have him arrested today. So I don't know what happened after that. He run, jumps out to go get my, my now husband. They get me inside. The two of them finally come inside, not arrested. So I assume he didn't kill the guy. <laughs> um, we do the ultrasound. Everything's fine. I go home. And I torture myself for the next several years. So fast forward a couple years. Mm -hmm. um, I am now married. Um, uh, we had talked to, we had talked to doctors. Um, and... I'm trying to remember <laughs> the timeline for me goes by what job I had at the time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which can be difficult. Um, but basically we, they told us that we should start. Um, because I had already had, I had already, uh, I already had endometriosis by this point. So after I had the abortion, I have now I have endometriosis. Now, is and that a cause from the abortion, or is that just something they that... don't? Nobody knows. Okay. I I never really talked about my abortion. Like I I shut down. I yeah. I I blocked it. I didn't want to talk about it at all. I didn't even I didn't even call a hotline. And there is a hotline. If you're out there and you had an abortion or you're going to have an abortion, there is a free hotline that you can call and they will talk to you yep. because it, it you are grieving and that's okay it's okay to make that decision and then grieve that decision because it's hard yeah 
Um, so I, I shut down. I don't know if I like mentioned it once or twice because you have to do your history, but I had been in intense, incredible pain. My days before my period of feel like barbed wire was going through my intestines. I ended up in the emergency room twice in one month. I racked up over $10,000 that month in bills in hospital bills. Um, some hospital, some hospitals thought I was drug seeking. Um, I did, they did, they did, <laughs> they did inject me when, once with a really strong one and I called a girl short and I re I'm so sorry. If you ever hear this nice lady at Paley hospital, I'm so sorry. I was, I and called you short. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, like as an in insult. Yeah. No, no. Okay. I had a nurse that was blonde and tall and she was a registration person who was blonde and short. And my brain vomited. I thought you were my nurse, but you're short. <laughs> the short person. It's, it's not really an insult. No, no. <laughs> it's an observation. Yeah. yeah she's <laughs> probably used to it at that point. <laughs> um, I was just like, like you're not mad. And you're like, well, you're short. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have one of those moments. That would have been funny though. My mom was like, you should stop talking. And I was like, I, wish, I fucking wish I could. <laughs> Why don't you duct tape my mouth shut? Um, so uh, I, at this point, um, I have convinced myself that I am being punished for having an abortion. And that's what my endometrius is. Uh... And Paying pennies. Now, yes, I was never going to have children. Now, I mentioned before, I didn't want to have children, but I met my husband and I saw him with my nephews and he is so good with kids. Do be like that, right? Right. And you're like, you know with what? Bitches. Yep. Ovaries popping. Yeah. Your ovaries like, you know what? We can do this. And you're like, no, we cannot. Every do you time. not remember yeah. How we were raised. And then these motherfuckers come in with that big smile. They get all goofy when kids get around. They're playing with them. They're crawling all over them. They're fake playing Xbox games and stuff. And then the 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 mammary glands and the ovaries are like, we're gonna do it. We're gonna give this bitch a kid. Bitches love kids. But yeah, so they told us to they told us to they didn't want to do exploratory surgery. The, the prognosis is that uh, the cervical cells or the endometrial cells, which live in your cervix and can, and it is not uncommon to have endometriosis. So um, they leave your cervix and they attach themselves to other organs in your body. There is a woman out there who I read whenever she gets her period, she gets a nosebleed because, and it's menstrual blood. Because that's where it went. They just that shit just floats wherever, and they can't tell because it's your body attacking your body. It doesn't matter how many scans you go through. The only way they can tell is if through exploratory surgery and a fucking like pinprick, yeah, of of material that's not where it's supposed to be can cause you agony, and they'll never see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So they don't want to do exploratory surgery. That'll cause scar tissue unnecessary before I, you know, it decided I'm not having kids or we have kids. We're not even married yet. Tell us to stop taking, um, stop taking birth control. And we do before, before we're, we're getting married that year, but we do, we stop. Um, and 20, I got married in 2011, 2012, 2013. I'm not really sure. I get pregnant. We are through the moon. We had we had given up actually by this point trying to get pregnant. I did the like, I did like you're not allowed to jack off. Like we have to have sex every two days. This is when I'm ovulating. You know, like your sperm's got and we we had it tested. He he's fine. I was I was the problem. It was depressing. My mental health wasn't great to begin with. Um, but we finally get pregnant. We get pregnant. We're so excited. I tell everybody I'm not supposed to. We're calling it Blueberry because one of those apps tells you the size of your baby based off of food. Yeah. We had reached Blueberry stage. So Blueberry stuck. Um, everybody at my works knows 
people at his work knows. He works at Babies R Us at the time. I worked at Michael's. We go in for our three-month ultrasound, and they, they're measuring everything. They're telling us where the baby's face is and everything like that. And then the woman switches a thing, and after a minute, she says, there's no heartbeat. Oh. So the best day of her life became the worst day of her life. Um, I'm, we're in the hospital already. They take us up to the hospital room. And right before I get into the doctor's office, I like nearly collapse in the hallway. I just cannot, I can't fathom what was happening. And this is like a Thursday or a Friday. And they schedule us for a DNC on Monday. Um, she said, I have two, we have two options. We can go home and try to let it happen naturally. A couple of things could happen. One, I would be giving birth to a stillborn baby. So I'd still be giving birth in some way, shape or form. So yeah. it's either going to end up like the abortion I had previously, which is extremely painful, or it's going to go longer. There's not going to be any more growth, but it's going to go longer. It's going to painful. I could potentially die because there is dead tissue right in my body. And and when now I do have a question when it comes to and I don't know if y'all are not I know y'all are not medical experts, but um when it comes to the stillborn births, your body still grows as if there is Mm -hmm. a live birth yes going to yeah. happen correct yes yeah. um the hormones are still there yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what's changing your body yeah. it's and just the growth is not happening for the baby but yeah. everything else is still going because your my your body is like oh it's still in here we're still making a house for a baby because your body <laughs> i hate to no i don't hate it because it's basically a parasite that is growing inside yeah. your body mm -hmm. like a your body worm. is dumb yeah and that's why and I, I said it the other day your body lowers its immune system because it's when you are pregnant because if it doesn't it will reject the child yeah it will reject the pregnancy because that is it it is a thing that is attacking your body so it, your immune system lowers yeah um which is hell because you'll get sick every five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so she said that it, it just, I think she used the word cruel. If I had just gone home, like it, it and dealt with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went home, we had a schedule for Monday. Um, and I see it every year. There's a bunch of haps in this, Two months, two months ago, April. Um, cryptic te uh, Facebook messages every year pop up. Oh yeah, Margo's going in for surgery. We don't want to talk about it. Just thoughts and prayers. No, cross your fingers, please. And I don't think I told people for years what had happened, but we have to go downstairs. We have to get my blood drawn. They need to know my blood type in case I hemorrhage during surgery yeah. yeah um we go downstairs i'm sitting there waiting to be called back for my blood draw and he says are you okay and i said like are you okay for a minute and i said yeah and he goes okay i'm gonna call my parents and he leaves for a couple of minutes and he comes back and i have never seen his face like that he was he must have been bawling on the phone with his mom because he was red and puffy and his eyes were red and it broke my heart just all over again to see him like that because he was just as happy as I was. So we do the test, we go home. He can't get off that weekend. He mm. has to go to Baby's Rest and work. What an awful place to work at at that time. Yeah, he actually, um, he, he had one girl come in and start bitching about how she had a terrible day. 
And then she looks at him and she's like, what's wrong with you? And he goes, well, my, the baby died. My wife has to have surgery on Monday. And here I am looking at baby shit. So for two days, all of his staff left him the fuck alone. <laughs> Good. And left him in the office. And. Probably um, best place for him. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. We go in on Monday and uh, they knock me out. I have my DNC. I wake up and me and Troy are just trying to be, just exist. Mm. And my fucking birth giver and the nurse are sitting there talking about how much of a pain it is. Kids can be a pain in the ass. And I was like, wow. And I looked at him. I was like, seriously? He was like, focus on me. Uh, and we tried to ignore it. And um, I had some blood work done. They were worried because my hormone levels had not come down. And if that had, if that was the, if your hormone levels don't drop, that means that there's something still in there that they need to go in and get. So now I'm thinking I need to have a second surgery. I go in, I talk to them about it. They give me an anti-anxiety pill. They realize that I now have an infection from the DNC. So I am in agony. Oh, God. Uh, my friend who is a, now a head of nursing in a hospital uh, wants us to sue them. But DNC... Uh, it is noted there that an inf infection can occur. I have an infection. I get antibiotics. I can barely move. I go back to work too soon. I shouldn't have. I was still in so much pain. You know. Sometimes uh, you don't have a choice, though, when you are broke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's yeah, something it was that felt. you need to have time. Like, that's why. We both needed time to grieve. Yeah. And we didn't have any. Yeah. We had to just keep going. And I am still mad about that. That's... And then people at work who I shouldn't have told because I was. And this is why they tell you not to say anything until after three months. Yeah. Because there is a lot of risk involved in that first trimester. Yes. And you. Um. You just don't know like there's i mean there's really a risk with any trimester but the first trimester is the first 12 weeks right uh, yeah 12 mm -hmm. weeks and um which to me is why i think the abortion bill in texas and the other states that have adopted one similar to it six weeks is like oh well, there are people who don't know they're pregnant still at six weeks you i mean i mean just by y'all stories alone only you are one that knew like kinky knew only because she kept up with it but even so like you didn't get that confirmation until later mm -hmm. um and the fact that like you have all these situations you have all these yeah you can detect a heartbeat at six weeks but that doesn't mean anything a heartbeat, mm -hmm. they, I mean, obviously, doesn't it's, mean... It's still a clump anything. of cells, regardless. <laughs> yeah. It is 100%. And then, here's the thing. 30% of people have miscarriages. 30% of women, and I actually think the statistics is probably higher than that, because we don't talk about it. And we don't talk about it because it's hard. But there is so much ostracization. There's yeah. so much bullshit surrounded by it. Well, what did you do wrong? Fuck you, woman. Like, mm -hmm. fuck you, person. I, that's not how that works. Like, I didn't, wi I wanted this baby so goddamn much. And it didn't happen. We don't know why it didn't happen. It just didn't. My body or the baby just couldn't, like, baby couldn't survive or my body decided that it wasn't a viable option. Right. There... One of those things happened. There is a reason for it. Yeah. 
Okay. We don't have breaks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't have breaks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't, don't have, have breaks. breaks. Yeah. <laughs> um. That's two. I don't think everyone. That is two. Yeah, that is two <laughs> I don't think um announcing it in the first trimester is the issue. I think the issue is that people put too much pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. on the, the woman the act of being pregnant yeah all of it um you can celebrate that life yeah you can then mourn that life mm-hmm. yeah it's not okay. really anybody's fault it's not yeah. anything to be done but it does happen and it shouldn't be stigmatized that it does happen right like that's yeah it's a weird thing (laughs) for people to be like when are you gonna have your baby when are you gonna have a baby and then and then they just fucking disappear make you feel bad like yeah what happened when y'all finally got pregnant with lily we were terrified i'm (laughs) i wouldn't expect any other answer (laughs) we were apps we were horrified we took two and like it wasn't it wasn't that quiet moment of oh my god baby i'm pregnant it was like i've t- i've taken two i'm pregnant i've missed I, okay we're pregnant and then we like sat down and it's not that we weren't happy but we were too scared to be happy so I missed all of those moments of like, I didn't get to buy him some cute little thing. Hey, baby, we're pregnant. That's not what got to happen. Not even a little bit. We were like, okay, these are the people. I'm going to call my parents and you can call your mom and we're not telling anybody else. And I hid that for three months. We didn't tell anybody until my birthday, which is next week, by the way. <laughs> we didn't tell anybody until my birthday party because, and then people would have figured out because I could, I would drink people under the table and I wasn't drinking. So people are like, what are you pregnant? They came in, they're like, what are you pregnant? And I was like, actually, I am asshole. And they're like, no shit. <laughs> and that's how people found out I was pregnant. Now there are a couple of people who knew and Vaughn, uh, who was my best friend Anna at the time, free stroke, um, went with me. We So we made the appointment for the first ultrasound and Troy opted not to go. He looked at me and he said, Honey, I, I can't. And I understood. I didn't want to go to my own ultrasound just in case. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Like, you just you send me a mail and let me know. Um, he couldn't. He could not do it. And I, I understood. Um, so, Lucky Anna bastard. took me. Right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, so, I Anna it. took I me. I understand. Sometimes. Yeah, it, you don't want to do I that totally twice. I understand that. Yeah. Um, so, we went. And... Um, I sobbed when I heard her heartbeat for the first time. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever heard. And I was sobbing and the tech is sobbing and Anna's sobbing. And I'm like, tell Troy. And he, and she sends him a message on my phone. There's a heartbeat. And he was like, I love you, baby. And she just texts back, I love you, too. <laughs> she knew. She didn't have to ask. And I listened to it all the time. I recorded on my phone every single time they played the heartbeat. I recorded it. Um, but I was still terrified. Yeah. I didn't want to unpack anything. I didn't want to, like, I wanted to keep everything in boxes. I 
was convinced that she was going to die at any second for nine months. The first, first my stress. first trimester, That's it is. That's really bad stress to have for a pregnancy. And um, some people think that, that uh, so at the time I was working, I was a full-time manager and uh, I had a new store manager. She, her baby died at 39 weeks. Oh God. Um, and I don't care what anybody says. She resented me the entire nine months that I was pregnant. It's not your fault. It's not, but I got treated like shit because of it. She um, process her own grief. Oh yeah. She, you know, anyway. Um, so my work situation sucked. I'm now terrified every second of the day that she's going to die. Um, I'm trying to be careful. I'm like watching what I eat. Um, first trimester, I couldn't, I didn't want to smell you cooking, especially me. Don't know. Not, I had to get, leave the, I'd have to leave the apartment. I, she only wanted fresh fruit and veggies. She didn't want anything else. I lost like 20 pounds. It's a great diet option, except for the fact that you're going to have a child. <laughs> also, by the third trimester, I was drinking I was drinking eggnog by the gallon a week. Oh my god! Oh yeah, she it got weird. Eggnog, huh? Yes, oh. yes. I now I can't I can't even drink more than eight ounces of eggnog without go with like a, once a week. When I was pregnant, I you would find me in the kitchen chugging that shit and eating cocoa puffs or like no count chocula was what I was obsessed with. <laughs> but for nine months, I was terrified. I met a midwife. I loved her. She left the practice. I had two months to meet every other doctor. They were all assholes. I hated every single one of them. December eighteenth comes up. It's my due date. It's the day after Troy's birthday. Um, we go, I am in, I am panic. I'm like hyperventilating by this point. I was, Troy forced me to put stuff together. He was like, baby, she's not going to die. I'm like, don't get rid of it. Any, any receipts? Like, um, so he takes me to the appointment. We see the only male doctor at the practice, which people have like told me is an absolutely wonderful doctor. He tries to break my band. So by this point, your I cervix is what I'm going to explain. I promise he's trying to break my band. Okay. Oh. He's trying to pop my band. Okay. So by this point, my cervix is already dilating. This man reaches his huge ass fucking hand into my vagina and tries to force my cervix open because he sees I'm panicking. Aww. That and I told I told him he, he asked me if I wanted him to do it. And I was like, yeah, I don't know shit. Because let me tell you, I didn't attend a single fucking birthing class because they're like a hundred and fifty fucking dollars. Not yes. a single one. They I know charge for the birthing classes. Yeah, even at the is, hospital I was delivering at. I think that should be a free resource. For yeah. Couple for people. They're like, "What's your birthing plan?" I was like, "You get her out, and we both live." <laughs> That's all I got because I had nothing. And plus, I again convinced she's gonna die. There, are, she tries to. Wow. That's scary. yeah. He tries to break my band. Um, I it starts contractions. I'm convinced I had back contractions one day. Me and Troy still fight about that. Um, he uh, he breaks my band. I start having contractions. He calls over to the hospital. The doctor on duty is one of the doctors, obviously from this place. And he goes, "Yeah, Margot's panicking. I'm going to send her over. I want you to induce her today." The doctor at the hospital hangs up on the doctor that called him. That called her. The doctor that we are sitting in front of. She hung up on him. She wanted me to wait two more weeks. This shit's not about you, woman. What? Why did she want you to wait? Because uh, it was my due date. I should wait. 
And he saw oh. that I was having a fucking panic attack. I was at 40 weeks. Exactly. Okay. I could have waited two more weeks, but like even Troy was like, yeah, she's like, does she thinks the baby's going to die? <laughs> you know, we get there. I walk through the door. That was fun because I had a contraction as soon as I got into the door. They take me up. They put me in my thing and all that stuff. Uh, put the heartbeat monitor on me. I'm not allowed to walk around. One of, that's the dumbest thing that happened. One of the dumbest things that happened. I had a day full of dumb shit. Let me just warn you. That was one of the dumb things. Because when you walk around, it helps the baby. I'm actually, I'm really, I'm really proud because I'm really happy that it happened the way that it did, even though it was very traumatic to me, mm -hmm. um, because they had planned on inducing me on the 22nd, which uh, was my father's birthday. And then uh, later I find out when I find out I have PTSD, that would have made my life really fucking difficult. Excuse me. Um, so I get in there. The doctor is a cunt to me the whole day. Nurses are the best thing that was ever invented. If you are a nurse in a maternity ward and you love your patient, I love you. Because the nurses are the only reason I did not kick the doctor in the face twice. And the only reason I kept pushing. I mean, it could have been an accident. <laughs> you know, it, oh, your, your leg slipped. Oh no, I told her at one point I was going to kick her in the face. And we'll, I'll get, I'll, I promise we'll get there. So I'm in the bed. They, uh, my, my, my mother in law speeds up from uh, Maryland. She is going to, uh, first grandchild, probably only grandchild, she is going, she will be there. <laughs> her I wanted in the room. I really wish I had had my nurse friend come, but I didn't. They go out to get some lunch. My nurse goes on a break. Doctor comes in, says, uh, and starts putting, puts my leg up on her shoulder and has a thing in her hand. See, and I'm like, what are you doing? Perfect time to kick her in the face. It would have been. I was like, and this is the first, what are you doing? She goes, we're going to break your water. Don't worry. It won't hurt. That was a lie. It hurt. Oh, that is the biggest lie in fucking uh -huh. history. If so if they ever say, I'm going to break your water and it doesn't hurt, they are lying to you. It, it could, it doesn't, I'm not saying it will hurt. It could hurt. It hurt me. My nurse is now mad because she was like, nobody was in the room. You could have come and got me while I was eating pretzels at my station to hold, to hold her hand. No. She did this without help? Like, she just... Yeah, no, it, her and her nurse that she was walking around with came in and did it. My nurse wasn't there. My husband and my mother-in-law weren't there. I was in the room by myself. It she was probably did... just, like, the prac the student or something. I don't fucking know. She should have um, had... Somebody. You there, yeah. That's... They give... Now they give me an epidural. They tell me not... To, they say, don't move. And I'm like, you are going to stick a needle into my spine. I will try. Mm -hmm. They lay me down. I'm convinced they gave me too much. Really? Because, oh, right, because uh, I could, they, because you need to be flat. Um, so that the, because what happened, the medication goes into your body. You need to be flat. I was not flat. I was tilted slightly by a blanket. I couldn't move my left leg at all. They're like, and they're like, we need to like, because they, they gave me a catheter. Thank God I was numbed. They gave me a catheter and they're like, um, you need to lift your leg. And I was like, I can't feel my leg. At this point, it's like, what leg? Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't, you need to move it. What the fuck do you want me to do? Like, I can't feel it. I can't move it. Like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> they gave me pycnomyosin. To get her to, you know, to tell her to get her ass out. Um, the nurses are amazing. They're in and out. They're doing a great job. Um, and my husband and my mother-in-law go to dinner. Every time these bitches left the room, I want to let you know some shit happened. <laughs> you know, They're on their way down to go get dinner. I laugh at that, but part of me feels like maybe that was intentional. 
No, no, no. You didn't have advocates in there with you. No, this was Lily. The second time was Lily. Because I'm laying there and suddenly I feel the most intense pressure in my pelvis. Oh, okay. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And like, I'm in a panic. And they're like, did you not think you were going to feel anything? And I was like, yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> and I feel this intense pressure. And they're like, well, you have to stop hitting the, 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 uh, nurse call? pain medicine. No, the pain those, medicine. The uh, epidural medicine. Epidural. They're like, you gotta, or, or it'll pro prolong the birth. So I stopped. But before that, I was hitting that bitch every, every chance I got. It's like, I don't want to feel shit. I it's called. Not what I signed up for. <laughs> I called my husband and I'm like, you get back here now. <laughs> Because they didn't want to eat in the room because I wasn't allowed to eat anything. And by this point, I'm starving. Yeah. My mom really um, wanted a freaking McDonald's Big Mac. <laughs> oh, I got I got what I wanted. That whole, doesn't that's all that matters. Whole time um, my brother was, she was pregnant with my brother and she never got one until after she had him. By the way, I didn't poop for nine months. I want to put that out there. I didn't poop for nine months. Oh God. How? Like not I I was so constipated. I was literally just drinking prune juice and like m like oh, milk of magnesia yeah. all the goddamn time. It was all that um, damn eggnog. <laughs> no, even before then, because I was I had chronic constipation before then. So she mm -hmm. was just like, "Oh, I don't want you to poop ever again. It doesn't matter what you eat." Thanks, Lily. So they they come back to the room. Um, I am panicking. Troy's like, "Everything is going to be fine," and I want to tell him to go fuck himself. Um. <laughs> Because everything is not fine. I can feel stuff happening. I don't like it. I kept wondering if I was going to poop in front of people. I still don't know to this day. And that's the pooped. nurses doing their job. That is the nurses doing their job. I probably took a dump. Yeah. Which would probably... It was the easiest poop I had in nine months. So... <laughs> I mean... That is something I learned in watching birth. Watching mm -hmm. my friend give birth is that... <laughs> If Everything you are straining, literally you are pooping. Out. Yeah. Yeah. She, she um, peed everywhere. Everywhere. There was mm -hmm. so much. So much. Everything is coming up. out. That's so why the bottom, the bottom of the beds, that's why they come down. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get stirrups or anything. I had a lady who I can't even remember on this side. And I had Troy on this side. And Troy's instruction is do not look at my vagina. <laughs> And he cuffs my leg with his left arm, and she's got my leg with her arm, and they have my leg push my legs pushed up as far as they can. And now it's time to push, and I don't want to. They're like, "No, you have to." And in my brain, I'm like, "What are you gonna do if I don't? Like, you can't make me. I, in my brain, and I didn't say anything out loud, in my brain, I became the biggest brat in the world at that moment. You have to push. You can't no, make me do anything. Um, so I, I push. I do a 10 count. And I do my pushing. By the way, Frozen is playing at this time oh, on the TV. <laughs> that explain explains Lily's love. Yeah, it was it was the end credits are coming as uh, as I'm pushing her out. Let it go. <laughs> yeah, Troy said it took me everything not to just look at you and tell you to let it go, and I was like, you would have ended up in a hospital bed right fucking next to me. I swear to God, Ron would have said it. <laughs> he wouldn't have held back. He would have actually. I said I want you to know how much that probably pained him with his dad jokes. <laughs> probably. <laughs> So he tells me, honey, you got to push again. And, I, and between each push, I, I was in labor for like 35 minutes, 30 minutes, which I was minimal compared to most women. Yeah. Um, and so I pushed. I can't remember most of the people in this room except for this one very beautiful blonde nurse that I had. And me and her had intense uh, unfluctuating eye contact <laughs> every time I had to push. She knew the assignment. She did, She was here. Like, 
here during the pushing. She knew. Um, she knew. She knew. She's a nurse. Nurses are fucking amazing. Um, so like she's my focal point. I'm I'm watching her. I I push, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. I did one of those, like they tell you make low noises when you're pushing. I did one high pitch noise and the doctor was like, I'm not, you're not, that's not helping. And I was like, I wanted to do it once. <laughs> it made me feel better. They get the baby out. They get Lily out. I knew her head popped out because my mother-in-law started bawling. Aww. I look out of the corner of my eye and my mother-in-law is just crying. She has her hand over her mouth. She's just crying. Lily comes out. Doctor's in there for like the last five minutes. She was even in there when I started pushing. She came in for the last five minutes. Um, so in my mind, that woman didn't do jack shit. The nurses did everything. They take Lily. They cut my cord. They, they're like, put, and then, okay. And then they're like, you need to push again. And I said, why? She's out. They said, you have to push the placenta out. And I was like, nobody told me that. What? You and they're like, you have... Hold up. Hold up. You mean nobody told you until mm -hmm. the moment you had the baby that you also had to push out the placenta? Correct. I had no idea. I thought it just came out with the baby. I thought everything I just came out. They're like, push the placenta out. I wanted to be like, no. I'm done. I wasn't I've even told enough. about the mucus plug. Oh, yeah. I wasn't told about that. They were like, did your mucus plug pop? I was like, I'm sorry, my what? They're like, and it looks like a Strangers ask me that question. Strangers ask me that fucking question. I was molested almost my entire pregnancy. I could have punched anyone, any one of them, thanks to Pennsylvania state law. But, yeah. Uh, fucking people are crazy around pregnant people. I, I hate it. I hate it. Anyway, so baby comes out. Oh. Um, they take her over. She cries. She's breathing. They take her over. They weigh her. They clean her up and everything like that. The doctor is between my legs, stitching my vagina back together. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. mm. They told she. They told me to stop pushing the thing. So I did. So I can feel a needle going into my vaginal wall. Ugh. Over and over again. As she is stitching. Oh. I'm twitching. They, This woman's hand is in my vagina with the needle. They put Lily on me. I am I'm twitching. I'm like, there was no magical moment. Oh, get her off of me. I'm in I'm pain. I'm in pain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, please take her. I said, Give her to her father. And yeah. they did. Troy is the first one to hold her. Have a picture of it and everything. My mother, -in -law, I asked my mother-in-law to come over and hold my hand. And the doctor's like, you can't feel this. And I said, yes, I can. And she goes, no, the epidural. I was like, you told me to stop pushing the button. And she's like, oh, oh. <laughs> she was like, I, she was like, I'll be done in like, I'll, I'll be done in like a couple of minutes. I said, how many minutes? And she was like, five minutes. And I said, I'm watching the clock go. Oh and I God. said, one, I said, I said one minute longer and I will kick you in the face. These are my words. I said, I'm going to kick you. Um, did she give you a husband stitch? No, okay, no, not, not that I am aware of. Um, cause that is not something that they ask you. They just give it to you. Oh, no. My my vagina... She, the, because Lily just kind of, like, shot out of me, and my body wasn't ready for her to be shot out of me, my vagina ripped up. And that's fine. Everything... So... Yeah. I didn't... I didn't get the episiotomy, thank fucking God. And I... Because I... I said no episiotomy, which... Is, oh! What is that, that is where they cook... They cut your taint between your asshole and your vagina. Oh! Yeah. Yep. They do it in... They do it so you don't tear because a clean cut is easier to suture than a ripped cut. That's okay. That okay. Mm. That makes sense. That's it's, what they say. That's, that's what, what they say. It's still, it's still not something the that the rip should do. heals better than the uh, yeah cut. Yeah. 
Really? If anybody ever was like, do you want an episiotomy? Say no. The answer is no. Really? I was yeah. very strict on this. I told my husband, if they come at me with a knife, you stop them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had it on my birth plan, too. Um, so, Lily is born. Uh, I can feel everything now, which is great. Uh, they try to start feeding her, um, and she's taking one of my nipples. My other nipple is inverted, but we don't find this out for three months. Oh, wow. We also don't find out for the first two weeks that Lily is not getting enough food from me. So she was losing weight rapidly because I couldn't produce enough. Mm. Back to the hospital, the nurse takes me into the bathroom because they can't let me out of the room until I pee in the toilet. I still can't feel that I have a urethra at this point. Right. Some things are still numb. Not the things I want to be numb, though. So she sits there because they are over occupants. Like, there's everybody's giving birth tonight. She has That's to put a catheter, man. yeah, a catheter in my into me to get me to pee in the toilet. And she's pulling at my vagina, which was just stitched shut, by the way. Uh, we get into the room. Troy goes to Wawa, gets me a bunch of food. I get a I get a roast beef sandwich because I didn't have lunch meat the whole fucking time because you can't because there is a germ on it. Um, oh, and then um, began the worst year of my life. Not one single doctor checked up on my mental health. Nope. Uh, nobody asked me how I was doing. Um, I pretended everything was fine because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Because your mental health after your body, after going through a traumatic event, which even if you have an easy pregnancy, and I say easy loosely, because even if you have a pregnancy that doesn't have too many complications, it's still a stress on your body. It is still a traumatic event. Because it is a major change to your body and to mm -hmm. your mind. And your hormones. After you give birth, your home hormones go down the toilet. Faster than fucking your date on prom night, okay? Everything is just done. Yeah. Your body's just pushing it all out. That crash so you, is hard. You, you're crashing. If you have PTSD, giving birth makes everything worse. I didn't know I had PTSD, so that was great. Um, I resented everybody and everything. Jesus. I didn't, like, I loved Lily, but I didn't, I just felt like a constant failure. I felt like I was failing her. I felt like I was failing Troy. I felt like I was living a lie. I... I, she needed me all the time and I just, and I just wanted to touch me all the time and you're 24 seven trying to keep this, this small wiggly thing from killing itself. Yeah. It's horrifying. And I didn't have a village. I used to just had panic for 12 months and everybody thought I was fine. After talking to Kinky, I'm 99% sure that I developed postpartum anxiety. Yeah. I couldn't, um, we had to co-sleep because I could not sleep if she was not touching me. I was convinced she was going to die. You had to feel, I had to feel yeah. the kids' breath on me. Mm-hmm. Any, because they, they, they talk so much about SIDS when you're leaving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I was convinced she was going to die if she wasn't will, right on top of that. Me. Itself will induce fear and anxiety to new parents. Just it, yeah. So you're, my hormones are down the toilet. I'm doing this. My husband doesn't have paternity leave. He takes one leave off, one week off to help me and the baby. By the way, I have, my six, stitches get infected. So I'm walking around the house, sitting on his, taking his pillow with me and sitting on ice packs because everything hurts Yeah, mm -hmm. and I have an infection. 
I'm panicked trying to breastfeed. That's not working. I'm not producing enough. I have one of my nipples is inverted. I'm eating cookies and drinking teas. It, it, I love Lily more than anything on this earth. It was the worst year of my life. How long did it take you to get through and get to a healthy place? Because you, I would say now you are in a much better place. Oh, yeah. How it, long did it take you to get to this point? It, uh, she is seven years old now. Yeah. I didn't seek help until she was around two. Wow. I had an oh, I had an oh shit moment. Oh. I had an oh shit moment that scared the hell out of me. I didn't hurt her. But I had a moment. Uh. And I said, I can't. I can't do this. Um, and it wasn't, I can't be a mom. It was, I can't be this person anymore. Yeah. That was the moment. Mm -hmm. After this moment happened, I sat down and was like, I can't be this person because I will become my mom. Yeah. And that's when I started th seeking therapy. But, like, it was hard. Hard. And I am convinced that she has some residual trauma from the first couple of years. She has a lot of anxiety about certain things. If she thinks she's in trouble, she will start crying. She, if, she, if she thinks we're mad, she will just cry. And I don't care what anybody says, that is my fault. She'll work through that, though. Especially having a mom who is now mentally in a much better place. Who yes, cares we have, about that. Yes, we have a much better relationship. The last couple of weeks have been really rough, but we've had a rough couple of weeks, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. Um, but I just, I wouldn't trade her for the world. She is my Lilith, and I love her to death. But I could have done, with the appropriate amount of help, could have done so much better that mm -hmm. first year. Even the entire pregnancy. Yeah. I didn't what? know I was I went to the emergency room. I didn't know your ligaments were gonna hurt when they stretch. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. One of the Go things, to the emergency room. Sick of, sick every week. Go to the emergency room. Nope, not doing that. It seems like one of the biggest things that I'm hearing that 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 seems to be a running theme is the lack of help. Oh yeah. I, I would like to throw in one one last thing yeah. before before I shut the fuck up. <laughs> months months in, I go in for my checkups. Mm -hmm. uh, I see male doctor at office. Um, I ask him about like a vasectomy or something like that. Um, he says, "Are you guys? You know, or don't you want any more kids?" I was like, "My husband might, but I really don't." Without looking at my chart, without looking at my history, he tells me, oh, just pop out another kid for your husband. Um, It'll be fine. Excuse me? That's not how that works. No, I don't have kids for my husband. No. That's One, no. I, I have been terrified that I won't be able to carry another. She is a rainbow baby, but that doesn't mean that I won't have another miscarriage. Right. I just, there's so much that I went through and her birth was traumatic. I just, and then he said that to me and I was done. Yeah. I never went back there again. I wouldn't either. At the, at the time I was struggling with so much mentally. I'm like, I don't know if I have enough love for another child. I said those words to him. I don't know if I have enough love for another child. He goes, ah, you'll love all of them. I have several. Cool. Bitch, this isn't about you. Yeah. This is about me. And that interaction really showed me that nobody gave a shit. About me. Everybody cared about Lily. But nobody gave a shit about me anymore. And my husband did the best that he could. Yeah. I don't want to throw him under the bus. He did the absolute best he could with what he knew. And he didn't know I was struggling. 
and he would take Lily when I, when he came home. Mm-hmm. And even that's if what you have, did. even if you have the best partner, it, it's very isolating. Yeah, so isolating because and it, are also there's so much shame. Yeah, yeah. I have a roommate too, and he was there. Thank God. Yeah, because there were days where he would come, like I would wake him up early and go, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't oh. hand her off. I just, I can't. So I have a literal village because I can't. And um, if it weren't for Roe v. Wade, I could have died twice. Yeah. If I, either I would have had it, had to figure out some way to have an abortion, or I would have bore a child into poverty that me and Troy may not have survived. Yeah. Or, uh, I could have died from not being able to remove the fetus, the dead fetus. Yeah. The dead clump of cells. Yeah. And that could have killed me. Um, so thank you, Roe v. Roe v. Wade. Yeah. For my life. Thank you so much for listening to Reproductive Romanticism. I would like to thank Crimson for joining me and opening up about her journey. You can find Crimson on Twitter and everywhere online at Crimson Pleasure. That's C-R-Y-M-S-O-N-P-L-E-A-S-U-R-E. If you would like to learn more about available resources for your reproductive journey, you can find those on the podcast website at twolazydogs.site backslash R-R. If you like this podcast, don't forget to give us a five-star review and check out other podcasts by Two Lazy Dogs Media. This has been a Two Lazy Dogs production.